Key West, a place of mystery and history. Today, Key West is known for its nightlife, beaches, fishing, and for being the southernmost point of the United States. From its own style and architecture to its shops, restaurants, and bars, Key West is an enjoyable place to visit. What's the history of Key West? Key West was founded in 1513 when Ponce de Leon claimed the island for Spain. Then it was called Los Martins. For more than 307 years, Key West was a territory for Spain. It wasn't until Lieutenant Perry ceded the territory from Spain. In 1823, Key West became a port of entry to the United States. Within 10 years, Key West became a fully functioning city. By 1845, Key West would see four forks on the island. Fort Taylor, East and West Martello Forts, and Fort Jefferson and Dry Tartugas, some 60 miles east of Key West. Over the next 100 years, Key West was destroyed by hurricanes and fires, saw the military come and go, and a decrease in multiple industries that once flourished. It wasn't until the 1990s that Key West saw its most profitable growth. Duval Street became a downtown and is the home of many tourist locations. Again, Key West has been a boom town since it got settled, and we have always moved on to the next thing. That's the one thing about Key West is that it, its survivability as this weird boom town. All right, uh, we got sponges, right? We're going to be known for sponges. Well, we overfished the sponges. They're all gone. How about, how about shrimp? Now they're all gone. How about turtles? Now they're all gone. Well, what do we have left? <laughs> well, we got the ocean. <laughs> you know, we got the water. Let's use that. So the Key West has always kind of moved it wreckers. You know, we were wrecking for a good long time. Now that's gone. You know, they, they got too good at regulating that. <laughs> You know, so uh, we've always moved on to that next big boom. What's the next big thing? And, you know, we, we've always kind of found a way to survive that way. Underneath the history of Key West is something more sinister. Often where there is history, there is often ghost stories and urban legends that shortly follow. Key West is not short of these stories and urban legends. David Sloan is the main historian on the subject of paranormal activity on the tiny island. Some of the most haunted places in the world are on the old shipping routes and if you look at things you know the old Spanish trade routes they used to go through New Orleans, um, Key West, Havana, St. Augustine, Charleston, all of these places have that certain element to them and Key West is one of the oldest cities in Florida and it's one of the most haunted so it only makes sense that this is the place for the world's most haunted doll. One story from Key West in particular is a story of a doll. A doll that is surrounded by mystery and legend. A doll that is said to plague hundreds of people that visit him. This is that story. This is a story of Robert the doll. First, we have to understand the background of the doll and who the doll belonged to. We start with the artist house. The artist house is located at 534 Eaton Street, Key West, Florida. This house was built between 1890 and 1898 and was the home of the Otto family. But the artist house is a colonial queen and style. The artist house is also the stopping point in many of the house tours to include some haunted tours. The Otto family moved in 1898. A lot of people think that the Otto family was very wealthy. And that comes from the fact that there was a long history of doctors in the family. Um, Jean's father was a doctor, Thomas. Um, Jean's grandfather was a doctor, Joseph. But doctors at the time weren't making the money that doctors do today. I mean, they were not a poor family by any means, but they were not super wealthy. You know, doctors in town oftentimes just gave their services for free because they had to help people the way that they made money was through pharmacies. And that's what Gene's father did, Thomas. He, he had a pharmacy across the street. He actually had two pharmacies in town. And um, that was the way they'd make their income. But wealthy by American standards today, they were not a super wealthy family. Um, you know, I, I don't have access to their personal records, but um, they weren't this super rich family that people imagined. And by the time Gene was growing up and after Gene's father died, by no means 
were the Ottos a wealthy family. So much of the stuff with Jean growing up is guesswork because legends happen, legends form, and, and people will tell you different stories about them. I do not believe that his parents were not available to him. I think the parents were around quite a bit. I think it was common at the time for people to have other people to help around the house. Um, Gene's father being a doctor, yeah, I'm sure he was very busy. Um, his mother, I imagine she was around quite a bit. I think she probably had someone to help with the house. It's a big house. And I believe this is where Emmeline came in. And uh, yeah, she would have become attached to the children. She would have helped care for them. But I do not believe that Jean uh, had parents who were not there for him. I, I do not believe they were, they were abs absent parents. I believe they very much cared for him. I, I believe they very much loved him. And he, in turn, loved them very much. And that's evident in the letters that are written back and forth. The doll was handmade in Germany by the Steiff Company, which began in 1880. The founder was Marguerite Steiff. She was diagnosed with polio at three years of age. She persevered and started making stuffed elephants. Her brother Fritz would take the elephants and sell them at the Heidemine Market. By 1892, the first illustrated Steiff catalog was released and showed a diversity of products. These products were elephants, monkeys, donkeys, horses, camels, pigs, mice, dogs, cats, hares, and giraffes. In 1902, the first teddy bear was created. These teddy bears had movable arms and legs. In 1906, the teddy bear took off in the United States. Robert the doll stands 40 inches and is stuffed with woven straw, also known as wood wool or excelsior stuffing. Robert the doll arrived in Key West in 1904. Um, he was not created by an angry servant. He was made by the Steiff Company in Germany. And uh, Germany was actually Prussia at the time. And the Otto family, Otto, German name. Um, they were German and English. So Jean's mother was over in Prussia and that's when she got the doll. 1904, Steiff invented the teddy bear. And she came back and she gave the doll to Jean when he was just four years old. And the doll was originally a clown. And Jean became very bizarrely attached to the doll. Um, he gave it his own name. His real name was Robert Eugene Otto. And from there, the relationship just started. One of the major beliefs is that the nurse became pregnant with Thomas Otto's child and either miscarried or lost the child shortly after its birth. The only thing that we have that suggests that there even was a child was that they show up in the 1900 census and they don't show up in the 1905 census. So they were more, and death records weren't really a thing. So like they were alive and then either not here or dead. I do not believe there's any anger. Uh, I don't even believe that Emmeline intentionally transferred her child's spirit into the doll. Um, I could be wrong, but I believe it was the child's own will. When the child passed, I, th I think the child went into the doll on its own. And everything's speculation about Emmeline and Thomas having this affair. But we need to look at all of these possibilities when we're trying to unravel the story of Robert the doll. And, and, and in tracing back the legends, it's a definite possibility. I said earlier, Robert and Jean were seen constantly together. Servants in the home often would hear Robert and Jean playing and would hear him ask a question and a deep voice answered back. Shortly after this, weird things started happening around the home. If something happened in the playroom, Jean would say, Robert did it. So Jean's parents would hear distinct voices coming from the room. They'd hear, they, they think Jean had friends over and they'd pop into the room to see who had come by and find that it was just Jean and Robert. Um, Jean used to get in trouble for things that kids would do, but he never took the responsibility on his, himself. Um, he'd always be heard saying, I didn't do it, Robert did it, and he'd blame the doll. And this went on for some time, uh, and this really launched the legend of Robert the doll. As most kids do, 
Jean left to go study at the Academy of Fine Arts in Chicago and the Art Students League in New York. After Jean's studies in New York, he moved and traveled to Europe where he developed a personal style. During a trip in Paris, Jean would meet Annette or Anne Parker, a native to Boston. Annette Parker was studying music in Paris at the time. Anne and Jean married on May 3, 1930. So they left Paris and they went to New York. And when they were living there, it's kind of interesting. The, the location where they lived, I'm not sure if it's the same building still or not, but it was used as the Osgood Corporation in the Spider-Man movies. And, um, but they lived there. And Gene worked at Wanamaker's um, selling, selling furniture, selling antiques. He, he was very into antiques. They had collected a lot of them. There's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to when or how Anne met Robert the Doll. There are unconfirmed reports that Gene became mentally and verbally abusive toward Anne. Some speculate that there was a lot of jealousy between Jean and Anne. There are a lot of stories about Jean being abusive towards Anne, and as time goes on, uh, I believe them less and less. Physically abusive, I do not see that in Jean Otto. I do not think he physically abused Anne. I think that's a legend that evolved from other stories. Mentally abusive, there's evidence of that. Some of the stories I've heard were that he liked to have everything in its place. Uh, that he took photographs and said, no, listen, you put that here after you dust. It goes just like this. And he had the photographs to show her where things went. Uh, I've heard stories firsthand that when he had his art openings up at the East Martello, that he'd have her wait outside and say, you don't come in for 10 minutes after me because he did not want to share that spotlight. And she was so beautiful, she was so talented that she would take the spotlight. Um, but they also collaborated on things, you know? I mean, they've got several compositions that they copyrighted together. So I think in a sense, maybe he wanted to be the alpha and for her to be the beta, um, but they still collaborate. He didn't quite stifle her to the extent that uh, stories make it out to be. You know. Today, with that game of telephone, the way things come, it's, oh, he used to beat the hell out of her and lock her away. Gene was not a bad person. He was a talented guy. He was a caring guy. Um, he may have been jealous of her talents. After Gene's death, the house was left to his sister. Anne would receive nothing in the Gene's last will and testament. Gene wrote Anne out of the will in his last months. Uh, not completely, but he left her the house and none of the contents. He left all the contents to his sister mitzvah. So Anne, you know, she was in her early 70s. She would have been able to make a living selling his artwork, um, selling the antiques they had collected. They had some great antiques they had collected throughout their lives. And she had none of that available. So she sold the house for $50,000. Myrtle Reuter purchased the artist's house in 1974. She would later find Robert in the attic. She would quickly become Robert's companion and would take him with her to her new home six years later. In 1994, she would donate Robert the doll to the Fort East Martello Museum. She claimed that Robert would move around and it was haunted. Robert did not go on display after being donated. I actually spoke with their neighbor and he did not like talking about Robert the doll. He felt that this doll stole the legacy of his friends. I mean, two talented people, Jean and Anne both, uh, who have been overshadowed by a doll. When I did get him to talk about it. It was for about 30 seconds. And he said when he bought the house, um, I asked him, I said, I said, well, was, was that doll here? And he said, he said, oh yeah, he goes, he was in a cedar chest in the second floor. And I said to Ann, um, oh, does Robert come with the house? And she said, um, I hate that fucking doll. It was Gene's best friend. Of course, he never could make any friends of his own. But that's the one confirmation that we have. And you know, as far as what the adult relationship was like, we've got the legends. And what I find with legends, there's always a nugget of truth. You know, they usually stem from something, but they do get exaggerated through the years. Um, I don't think Gene was going grocery shopping with Robert the doll. You know, it wasn't like that. Enough that Anne would make comment about it when she sold the house. 
The staff of the museum would see Robert in different areas of the museum. One story comes from a staff member who said the doll would knock on his display. The staff member would say the knocking would stop and continue on demand. Robert the doll is now on display in the East Martello Fort. Visitors come from all over the world to meet him. Some come with negative intent and think the legend of Robert is false. Shortly after, these people have something happen to them. In these cases, Robert is to blame. The museum receives countless letters from people apologizing for any wrongdoing and to end the torment. Robert is often thought to be the inspiration of Chucky. Chucky is not the inspiration of Chucky. Child's Play creator and co-writer Don Mancini explained that Chucky draws heavily from the My Buddy dolls. He said that, quote, in my original script, he was originally called Buddy and we couldn't use it because of the My Buddy doll. The director went out and got a My Buddy doll, a Raggedy Ann, a Raggedy Andy, and one of those life-size baby infants. What I told Kevin Yeager was, I wanted something similar to My Buddy doll. I described Buddy in my original script, not Chucky as wearing re-button overalls, red sneakers, striped sweater with red hair, blue eyes, and freckles. Kevin went off and sketched many designs of Chucky until the final was picked. Jagger then built the first doll from those sketches and my details. Um, Robert the doll was not inspired by Chucky, or, or Chucky wasn't inspired by Robert. Um, Don Mancini does state, he says, um, I was inspired by the My Buddy doll and blatant consumerism. Um, you know, there's legends which stem from the truth, and then there's lies. And Robert inspiring Chucky is a flat out lie. And someone made it up one day, and it stuck, and people like it. And they want this evil doll who's destroying other people's toys and killing young girls and trying to smother people. It's not Robert. People come into the museum and they, they want Chucky. And you know, when they bring that negative energy, they're gonna get it. You, know, you, you get what you put out. And there are entities who are willing to do that. Museum staff have noticed a shift of energies at the East Martello Fort. When Robert was not on display, he started receiving visitors who learned of the museum's new resident. Since he was put on display, people have reported camera and electronic devices malfunction in his presence. And that goes right into his history of messing with cameras. You know, the, the first professional photographer they brought in, you know, to take pictures of him, you know, they're like, oh, you know, you got to ask the doll's permission. I'll be damned if I'm going to ask a doll's permission to take its picture. And he's, the pictures worked, just not of the doll. It took an exact backwards of him. So he's clicking this way, and it's writing him out of the lens and taking pictures of the wall behind him. One of our most popular videos with Robert has multiple messages apologizing to Robert for watching our video. Amber and I believe that if you treat Robert with respect and no ill intent, you'll be fine. This includes watching any video of Robert the Doll. I fully believe there's multiple entities at work with Robert the Doll. Um, there's the innocent child, and then there's at least two other dark entities, and they're the ones who will cause problems for people. They'll come beat people up, um, cause mayhem. And they're not the innocent little child. They're the ones to watch out for. It's, just, it's, it's crazy because he wanted to be known for his paintings. Yeah. And now he's known for his doll. Yeah. Which is kind of weird, right? I mean, I can't imagine having your legacy stripped yeah. by a doll. Right. You worked so hard for her. And, you know, I, I have no doubt about the relationship between Gene and his doll, but I think mm. the legend has amplified the doll's importance in his life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, Gene was this great community guy, and he did so much. I mean, he helped form the Key West Art and Historical Society, wow. which runs the fort where he lives. I just uncovered an article that has Gene's vision of the fort. Wow. And to think that he was creating the doll's future home, I, you know, I, I don't think he, I don't think he got up and had breakfast with the doll. I don't think he had lunch with the doll. I think the doll was there. And I think he cared for the doll. I think he loved the doll. Mm -hmm. 
but I don't think it dominated his life. Right. And um, for his whole legacy to be eliminated by a doll, it's interesting. Right. And then again, if the doll wasn't there, maybe nobody would be talking about him. True. So maybe this is a launching pad, and maybe there's a future legacy. Right. I don't know. There are a lot of legends about Robert the doll, and so much of it's so much of it's false. And you know, people retell a story and they want to make it better and better and better. Um, but when you strip it down, so much of it's just bullshit. People want to build this evil doll, and Robert's not evil. It's the other ones around him who are.